What's going on everybody? Since I got a bike, I had always wanted to do a video and or series on how to ride. Not that I won't do one in the future, but I wanted to do one when I still had like the stupid questions in my head that I had and stuff like that, just because I felt like it would have been a little more beneficial for new riders. So right now what I want to do is I kind of want to talk about a few of the things that I was confused on, at least from a reading aspect, because I imagine like most people, um, before I started to ride, I watched a ton of videos and read a ton of stuff on how to ride a motorcycle. It's like all I did for like three months before my MSF course. By the time my MSF course came, I felt like if I had a bike, I could have just taught myself. Granted, I'm glad I didn't, but, but yeah, there were a few aspects of riding that I had a difficult time grasping just by listening to people do it and watching videos on. So I'm gonna do my best to uh, just totally dumb it down. I'm gonna talk about braking in general, rev matching and counter steering. Now braking, I don't know why I put so much thought into how to brake, but for some reason I was always like confused when you're supposed to pull the clutch in and stuff like that before I got on a bike. I didn't didn't quite grasp it probably like I should have, being the smart guy that I am. Listening to people talk about, you know, braking and pulling the clutch in when you brake and stuff like that, I didn't understand when it was necessary for me to do so. So we're gonna talk about that. I guess we'll wait till we're moving. I guess that's, that's what the people do, right? That's what the good vloggers do. They don't let you sit at a light and watch nothing. Okay. Anyways. Braking, 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 braking. A couple different ways you can brake, for those who don't know. First off, you got your front brake, your front handlebar, your rear brake, which is your right peg, and engine braking. Now, engine braking is when you, engine braking is when you pull in the clutch and release the clutch out without giving any more throttle. And what it does is the engine initially brakes for you. It'll slow you down. You'll get a little shift of momentum for your body going forward and the bike is braking for you without you having to apply any of the brakes. Um, so when you hear people doing bike reviews about how hard the engine braking is, that's what they're referring to. When you are downshifting by pulling on the clutch, kicking that puppy down, and letting go of the clutch without applying any throttle. Slowly slow down the bike for you, and each bike is a little bit different about how much engine braking occurs. So for instance, we'll go clutch, let it go. and you can hear it kind of slowing down for you. Um, it's a way to go about it if you're coming up to a stop like that and you don't feel like putting the brakes on. A simple solution to kind of slow down without using your brakes. Now, unlike a car where when you let go of the gas, it'll coast for a, a good time before it starts slowing down, a bike slows down relatively quickly when you let go of the gas. So just letting it go, you can just see how quick it drops down. So that's something you do have to you know keep in mind when you're doing it. I just can speak for sport bikes. I don't know cruisers really and everything like that. Now, as far as using the clutch for braking purposes, going at speed, like if you're on the expressway or just like something like right there, right to slow down, you don't need to pull in the clutch when you're braking. When you pull in the clutch, there is no power going to the motorcycle. It's essentially like being in neutral, but you're holding the clutch instead. It's like right now, if I pull in the clutch, nothing can happen. I can rev, nothing is gonna do anything. So that is not necessary when you're going at speed to pull in the clutch. Like I can brake, brake, nothing, no problem. When you're pulling in the clutch, it's essentially going over like when you're taking off. When you do not have enough speed, when the bike is not moving at a certain mile per hour, let's say, let's say it's five miles an hour. If you go off from a line at a stoplight and you let go of the clutch too fast, your bike, it stalls, yes. So if you're coming to a stop like this and you're not holding in your clutch, your bike is going to stall when it gets to that certain speed. That is the only time you really need to pull in the clutch as far as braking goes. So just know that when you brake, when you're coming to a stop, so I always pull in the clutch. But if you're ever just around town to me and you're like, I don't know when to pull in the clutch, you don't have to pull it in when you're going at speed. Like I can brake all day right now and nothing's gonna happen. For some reason, I just, again, I don't know why, but just reading it, I just I wasn't sure when to pull the clutch in for braking. Now I know. Now we're gonna go down to rev matching. I notice occasionally in vlogs that people try to rev match when they're going slow, which doesn't really do much. You have to be kind of going a decent amount in order to start rev matching. I mean, if you're like right now, my bike's at 5,000 RPMs. Rev matching, I mean, wouldn't do much. I'm in third gear. But like if you're coming to a stop, unless you're going quick, 
there's not really a need to rev match, nor does it sound good. Instead, you'll get people slowing down, and then they'll try to rev match and just end up jerking themselves forward because they give it throttle. Now, I couldn't, again, shocker, I couldn't really piece together rev matching when I was reading about it and kind of watching people. I understood the essentials of what it did and how to do it. I just wasn't really sure. I totally understood it. I don't know if that makes sense. So for rev matching, we're going to go to a bicycle. And a bicycle is going to be our frame of reference because most people have ridden a bike before. So that's what we're going to do. Now picture you're on a mountain bike or any bike with gears and you're in the highest gear and you're going as fast as you can. You know when you gear up, there's going to be there's going to be a heavier resistance when you're pedaling, right? Now, we all know you've done it before. Let's say you go from your top gear all the way to your bottom gear without slowing down at all. What's going to happen? Your feet are going to be pedaling like this with a lot of resistance against you because you're in the highest gear. When you go back down to first gear, there's going to be no resistance at all, let alone at that speed. So what's going to happen is while you're pedaling like this, if you drop down to first gear, your feet are going to be going as fast as they can. And you're not going to be able to keep up with it. And a lot of people, you know, slip or foot comes off and you get a, a pedal to the shin. I know we've all had that. So what rev matching does is essentially it anticipates that, it anticipates your downshift. Here, we'll, we'll do it right here. So we're at speed, fifth gear. You see how it goes, vroom, vroom, vroom. That's what rev matching is doing. And what it's doing is when I go from fifth gear to fourth gear at 60 miles an hour, I need to double check, I don't even know. I don't want to give you like false. Let's say I'm at 6,000 RPMs in fifth gear. Probably be wrong. So 6,000 RPMs in fifth gear going 60 miles an hour. When you go down to fourth, it's gonna jump up, you know, 500, maybe a thousand RPMs. So what you're doing is you're anticipating that jump by pulling the clutch, blipping the throttle. So when it's sitting at 6,000, you're gonna blip it. It's gonna jump up to 7,000, and it's gonna anticipate when you go down that gear, it's gonna catch up. Much like the bike scenario where you are getting ready to pedal faster as soon as you downshift. I don't know if that really made a lot of sense. But you can rev match it anytime. It doesn't have to be braking. Like if I'm on the expressway and I want to do a pull, I'll drop down a second gear or third gear or whatever it might be, and then I'll go. Just because it doesn't lose any momentum for me. So I go. Just like that. So going back to the bike scenario, when you're in that high gear and you know you're gonna drop down, and there's gonna be less resistance forcing you to have more rotations per minute, you're gonna kind of brace yourself and start pedaling faster right before you end up downshifting so you can keep up with how the bike's gonna react to that downshift. Again, that's kind of the, that's the best way I can explain it to you guys. I'm not, I don't know, I'm not gonna try to be like, oh, I'm avoiding the technicalities because it'll confuse you, no. I just don't fucking know the technicalities. That's what it comes down to. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my example and how I kind of relate rev matching. You can do it coming to a stop. You can do it just at a cruising speed if you want. If you're in too high of a gear and you want to drop down. Like when I said I dropped down on expressways, I dropped down to get, you know, into the power band so I can pull a little quicker. If I'm in sixth gear going 60 miles an hour, you know, I got to really wait for the power to kind of kick in. But if I drop down to second or third, the power is going to be there instantaneously. So hopefully that made sense to at least one of you. I mean, if I can help one person kind of understand it a little better than they otherwise would have, I'm going to count that as an accomplishment. But you're just getting the bike prepared for dropping in gear. See, like, in my opinion, I was going kind of slow to start rev matching. I don't think it's really a point. That's just me, though. I don't really do it unless I've come up to it to a stop going relatively quick. Counter steering, oh man. The thing I read and in my mind, what happened for counter steering is you turn left to go right. In my head, that is what it was. That is not what it is. In a sense, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what happens, but I even think it's part of it on, like, on the written test. It, it explains it in a question, really. Engine brake. You're not turning left to go right but at a certain speed i forget what the speed is there's not like hey this is the speed where it's going to occur no but it's like the 15 i don't know maybe 20 mile an hour range where counter steering kind of is in effect and again i'm breaking stuff down in stupid ways that makes me kind of understand it 
So don't be like, hey, this is what happens. No, 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 no. This is how I dumb shit down so I feel like I can understand something better. If I had a pop-up book with pictures, I'd be all for it, but I don't. Once you're at that sweet spot mile per hour, if you want to say it, what you're doing is you're initiating the bike to lean. You're not turning necessarily, but you're initiating a lean. Push left, look left, go left. Push right, look right, go right. And what that means is you're pushing your left handlebar up. So physically pushing it up, looking left, and it's gonna go left. Would turn here, but there's a lot of gravel and I'd probably fall down and go boom. So right now I'm at speed, and if I push my left handlebar up, see how I go to, go to the left, push, go left. What you're doing is you're essentially, you're leaning the bike over. So when you see MotoGP guys going around turns like that, and they're hanging off the bike, direction they want to go, they're pushing that handlebar up to initiate the lean to go with them. They're not off the ass because it looks cool, they're off because they're trying to lean with the bike in the direction they want it. When you see people trying to like go quick around corners or some people, you know, have their little twisty runs that they do, they're not leaning properly and it looks goofy. They lean off the bike where they're pushing the bike the opposite side of where they should be going, which is, I mean, it's really your natural reaction. Your natural reaction is to kind of counterbalance things, not to go left and be like, oh, I'm gonna lean the lean over to the left-hand side because you just imagine you're just gonna tip over. But what they do is they have a left-hand turn, they like get off the bike because, you know, they want to be MotoGP and think it's necessary. So they get that ass cheek off the bike. They look and lean left, but they're pushing their right handlebar away from them, so the bike is going like that. And when you try to turn like that, it's not gonna go the direction you want. So what you're doing is you wanna push left, look left, go left. So sorry if that doesn't make a lot of sense to people. Again, I know something that I was confused with, what was going on before I actually got on a bike. And believe me, once you get on a bike and you start you know, pushing it around and doing this, it might not believe it, but that's what's happening. Like a lot of people counter steer without even knowing it. If you have a bicycle standing straight up, not on a kickstand, but straight up, and you turn the handlebars all the way to the left, it's gonna fall down on the right because that's where all the weight's gonna go. It sounds crazy. It does. It, it does. It does. But you're not turning left to go right. That's not. That's not really what's happening. You're initiating a lean with the bike, which as a result is counterintuitive to what you are used to. Again, these are just a couple things that I had issues with processing prior to actually getting on a motorcycle. Once I got on a motorcycle, you know, it, it really kind of resolves itself. It's not very confusing. It makes a lot of sense. You can feel it. You can do it. No big deal. But I watched a ton of videos on rev matching and counter steering and stuff like that to try to get a better understanding of what was actually going on. And I just hope that maybe, maybe, maybe I can help a couple people along the way understand it a little better than they already did. Doesn't that look like a haunted mansion? I think it does. Uh, so according to me, that is how you dumb down some of those things. Oh yeah. Again, I hope somebody learned something from this rambling nonsense that I try to try to have. I don't know, we'll see how 290 is. Maybe we'll go downtown. I guess that'll sum it up for this uh, little learning experience. Thanks for watching this. If anybody is a new rider or thinking about riding and, and one of the topics that I mentioned are like, I'm still kind of fuzzy on it. I wish somebody could talk to me about it without me asking in the comments. Let me know, because I was that ass clown who didn't know. Um, if you want, shoot me an email. to white ninja 636 at gmail. If you're a little hesitant about putting shit in the comments, just because you think your question might be dumb, totally get it. Not all of us have been there, so I don't know why people just like to troll and ruin people's days, but they do. They're out there. They suck. We know. Shoot me an email. I'll get back to you very quickly and we'll take it from there. Uh, but yeah, shoot me an email if you want to discuss it. Happy to do so. If you have any other questions, if you're looking into riding or anything like that, by all means, don't hesitate. I don't know my demographic of viewers. I don't want to say subscribers because there's not that many, but viewers in general. Um, so if you guys are looking into it, feel free to shoot me an email or a DM on Instagram, whatever you want to do. All right, so thanks for watching this, and take a read.